Welcome to Adobe Audition. Once again, it's Isaac. We're going to discuss Edit View. Edit View is the view that you will spend 75% of your time in. It has everything. Up at the top, you can see File, Edit, View, Effects, Generate, Favorites, Options, Window, Help. And to the left, you can see where your files are. You're able to click on those files. So let's get started. To start the fade in, you're going to highlight the piece that you want to do the fade in on. Once you click on the effects bar, you're going to click on Amplitude Compression and then Amplify and Fade. Then under your presets, you're going to go scroll and you're going to hit Fade In. Then you're going to hit OK. If you'd like to hear what the sound will be like before you hit OK, you can always click Preview. Once you hit OK, the fade will be applied to your sound. Then you're able to hear how the fade impacted your sound. Now the opposite of a fade in is a fade out. How you do a fade out is basically the same thing as fade in, only inverse. Now a fade out is the same thing as a fade in, only you start with sound and you'll fade out to nothing. To do a fade out, you do the same steps you did to do fade in. You go to effects, amplitude and compression, then you click amplify fade. There should also be a preset for fade out. Now your fade out has been applied. If you'd like to quickly apply what you just did over again, you hit F2. That will then bring up the box for Amplify Fade or whatever effect you recently applied and you can simply hit enter again and it will quickly do it. Here you will see I do it in succession three times. So now I've applied three fade outs and a fade in and this is what it sounds like. Much different than what we originally started with. Now I'm going to show you the left and right channel. The top part of the sound waves is the left channel. You'll be able to indicate which side is which by the letter that appears near the cursor. If there's no letter by the cursor, then you've obviously highlighted both channels. But if you look closely, you can notice the R to indicate right channel. Now I'm going to highlight the right channel, and then I'm going to lower the amount of sound it has. I'm going to go ahead and fade the whole thing out. Now you can see it's dynamically different. Now to undo anything that you've done, you can simply hit Control-Z. It's a shortcut for undo. Now I've undone the sound dampening that I did on the right channel. And now I will undo the fade out and fade in so we will have the original sound that we first started with. You can notice that we now have the same image of sound waves as we did before. Under edit you can view all sorts of shortcut keys. There's various ones. If there's a shortcut for it, you'll find it. As always, control C is copy. So here I'm going to copy this segment of sound. To put a sound in, you can simply mark where you want to put it in by using your cursor and hit control V for paste. Now you can hear the sound difference because I pasted the same sound in succession two other times. Now I'm going to show you how to mix paste. It's a little trickier, but it saves a lot of time and sometimes it helps you avoid having to go into multi-track mode. Simply highlight what you want to use and hit control C. Again, that's the shortcut for copy. Then figure out where you want that sound to start and click in on that particular place. Now that I've clicked in, I will hit control shift V. That will bring up the Mix Paste menu. The Mix Paste menu is simple. It allows Insert, Overlap, Replace, Modulate, and it allows you to select the volume of the sound that you're going to paste in. So I'll hit OK. And now you can see the Mix Paste sound has been mixed in. The original sounds are still there, but their wave is being covered up by the new wave. You also notice that that wave is not as tall as the other wave because I turned the volume down to 60. So in a sense, you created a new sound. Now I'm going to click on a new file and bring up a song and show you how to normalize. This is your sound meter. You can see it's numbered. It goes from negative 70 all the way to zero. Zero tends to be the peak. If it goes past zero, it'll be clipping and it usually causes distortion. These little squares will glow red if you tend to have distortion or you're clipping. It's best to avoid this. I will now play the song. It's over. You can see that when the song was mastered, it was put to a point where it was limited to go at about negative 0.1, so it would never reach zero. Now when you put a song into automation, or for programming, you usually want to bring it down to negative three. You do this so if the music's been potted up a little higher than it should be, you won't have any problems because it still won't be distorting over the airwaves. 
to make it simple, I'm just going to highlight one part. I'm going to go to Effects, Amplitude and Compression, Normalize. Normalize is already set to negative 3, so I simply hit OK. Now you can see the waves have been made smaller. I'm going to show you the difference now on the sound meter. Now you can see that the song had been normalized to negative 3, which was perfect for automation. I will now demonstrate loop play which, when hitting spacebar or playing a certain part of the song, it'll strictly loop whatever's highlighted, or whatever is being viewed with the view bar. This button is the play looped, or view or selection button. It's great. Say you want to hear something longer, but you want to view the waves close up still, simply select what you want to have looped, adjust your view, and then begin. You won't have to worry because even though you can't see it, it'll still loop all the way up until your selected point. The green is what you can view. The white around the green bar is simply what's been selected. So these are the basics of Edit View. To learn more, continue on through the tutorials.